<laughs> hey, Miri, how you doing? <sighs> a delightful breeze and a breathtaking view. The music is what so is soft. Like in the future? Is the world still a beautiful place? Hmm. As beautiful as ever. Some parts, yes. Others, not so much. It's more beautiful here? Ah, uh, definitely not true. Hmm. I think it's truthful. Some parts, yes. Others, not so much. Um, but that's kind of true of anything and everything, right? Um, there's always kind of good and bad. There's always growth and death. And I don't know. Part of that makes it kind of beautiful, too. So I think I'm going to be honest and just say some parts, yes. Others, not so much. Because that's true. There are some parts that are struggling, especially right now with the final days. But there's definitely, definitely parts that are beautiful. Dark hidden places, rife with danger. Those of an altogether different, but no less powerful sort of appeal. While we wait, will you not tell me about your adventures? Oh man, that's a, about a two-year journey. Not the events which led you here, but the simple delights all your own. Uh, we've got like 200 or 130 VODs that you could watch through. <laughs> By learning about the future world, I may gain insight into future me's plans. That's really good, Karinika. Yep, the good and the bad. <laughs> but more than that, I have an interest simply as a fellow traveler. Short of going somewhere oneself, there's not more stirring than hearing another's account. Or seeing pictures. Oh, I was wondering if we would get to choose what adventures we'd tell about. I definitely would be interested in telling about uh, Harsh not dying and uh, our adventures to the first and... Uh, some of our cool primal battles, the the one where we just barely beat the lightning dude in time before the timer ran out was really awesome. Um, <laughs> the harsh on emote. Incredible! <laughs> oh, that I could have been there to see it. <sighs> There's a lot of crazy cool moments shared Yours with all y'all. Harsh and unforgiving world. Yet in spite of this, your brethren hold fast to their virtue. To know that the light of mankind's potential still shines, even in that faraway place, it gives me heart. Thank you for regaling me with your tales. I will treasure every word. Oh, and also Tataru is queen of the planet, so... As you know, I was once a scholar. And among other things, I sought to understand the workings of the world. What exactly is ether? How formed the laws of nature? When sprung mankind? Riddles and mysteries beyond counting. Over the years, I have managed to find answers to some few of them. Yet rather than attain a sense of mastery... The more I understood, the more I came to hold the world and its miracles in awe. We too are miracles, each and every one of us. Born of the warm breath of life that traverses the heavens, swirling through eternity. When I fully grasped the improbability of our existence, nothing felt impossible anymore. If it could be imagined, it could be done. The improbability of our existence. A 
passion swelled within me. An epiphany dispelling all preconceptions of what was natural and true. And a presence without. Immense, yet intimate. Fate, perhaps. Holding us in its tender embrace. As reassuring as it was intimidating. How keenly aware I became of creation's fragility. Built as it is upon precarious happenstance. Unless it was all intentional. I overcome with an irrepressible urge to know the world more intimately. To hear its voice. Hear. Feel its breath. Feel. Think. What? I ventured forth on a journey that very day. So very long ago now. It's the second time we've had hear, feel, think. Freed from presumption and prejudice, I saw the world through a newborn's eyes. Everything fresh and new. And so, so beautiful. Lands that stretched on forever. Skies one could drown in. The heartbeat of nature, silent yet strong. And amidst it all are people. Beacons of light and life. Laughter that warmed my heart like naught else before. They are my meaning. And my purpose. My love. That's why she can't give up. And so long as they need help, I cannot return to the star. Because there are people who need her. And, and there are, are still people to care for. Perhaps my future self is still waiting for it. A moment she can let go and walk unto the end. Walk unto the end? Walk unto the end? <gasps> Definitely, uh, she did not say the thing yet. And let go and walk unto the end. Safe in the knowledge that man will find his own way. You, who are our future, tell me this, and tell me true. Has your journey been good? Has it been worthwhile? Yoshi P asking the player directly. Oh, I love that it's giving a long moment to reflect. Pray forgive my lateness. We don't even get to answer? Oh, man. Uh, my answer that I would give has been, uh, yes, it has, it has been good and it has been, it has been worthwhile. Um, it's been, it's been really fun and it's been, it's been cool because it's been with people that I can share it with. I'm really, 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 really glad that, um, Holo pushed me and I chose to, to stream and to do the VODs. Even if you go back and watch the early VODs, the quality is absolutely horrific and, and terrible. And I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. And I think kind of in, in that reflection, what makes it good and worthwhile is having people to share those experiences with that. It's not a fully selfish. I'm just going to do it myself and get to the end and be like, Oh, that was a great story. Okay. Bye. Um, I may have talked about this briefly and I'll wrap it up very fast is that when I get to the end of a good, good, good book, the only regret of getting to the end of a good book is not having somebody else who has also read the book to share in the enjoyability of that book with. It's like, yes, this has been amazing, and I'm really glad that I experienced it. But I can't talk to anybody about it because they haven't read this book. So then I just go around slapping people, and I'm like, read this book. It's so good. So then we can talk about it afterwards. <laughs> uh, definitely not what Holo did with me and uh, Final Fantasy XIV. My so. observation subject was rather irritable, and it took a while to settle it down. No need to apologize. Your work takes precedence. Besides, we had a pleasant conversation in the meantime. You're too kind. Now then, I'm told you wished to ask me some questions. Indeed. I have an interest in one of Hermes's creations. Meteon, you witnessed a host of them take flight, yes? 
Oh, that! Yes, yes, I did. It was in the dark of the morn. I'd left the Thalassi after nocturnal observation. As I walked along, I spied a bright light climbing high into the southeastern skies. Then, in an instant, it was gone. Like a shooting star, only rising rather than falling. Are the meteors that we see in the final days Meteon, Meteor coming back? But it's like not them coming back yet. But I'm thinking way too much about this. I'm thinking way too... I'm connecting dots between Meteor and, and them out in space and then coming back like a reverse shooting star and my brain's going places it shouldn't go. But then another shot up. Then another. And another. Intrigued. I made my way to the edge to investigate. It's spelled with an O. Who should I spy on an isle to the south? But Hermes and Meteon, the Matea, rather. Matea. Materia, Cloud, I got your Materia. I realized they must be the shooting stars that I'd seen. A dazzling spectacle indeed. Have you spoken with Hermes about this? I have a feeling he didn't want anyone to see him. Oh, yes. The sight left such an impression on me that I approached him about his mystery project the very next day. Alas, he said that he couldn't reveal anything just yet, that he needed to conduct further tests. Oh. <laughs> very mysterious. It shouldn't be long now, though. He often returns to that isle, and I have a feeling he's nearing a breakthrough. Are they coming back? Wait, is their return what sets off the initial final days? Splendid. We are likewise eager for the details. Well, that is all we wish to ask. Thank you for taking the time to indulge our curiosity. You're very welcome. It's always a pleasure to speak with other inquisitive souls. Oh, and will you be descending now? If so, I shall link the doors for you. Oh, thank you. Very kind of you. If they didn't find any life out there, and they returned empty, and they're entelechies, which means that they connect, like, emotionally, maybe the, the whole planet gets super sad because there's no more life in the universe, and the, the planet decides that it's going to fade like the, like the flower in our hands. I should like to visit the site from which Hermes sent forth the Metia. If we are fortunate, we might find some hint as to what drives this research of his. Galane said she spotted them on the south, in the southeast, rising from an isle she could see from the edge. If we stand at the same vantage point, it should not prove too difficult to locate the isle in question. Let's take a look, shall we? Yeah, but the question is how do we get there when we can't fly yet? We need all the ether currents to be able to fly so that we can even get to it. Especially since she said it was an island, right? All right, uh, we'll just, we'll just run it. We'll just run it with Rathalos. Come on, Rathalos. Give me, give me the wings. Give me the wings. With the tree. The Entelechi tree. Now, if I were conducting some mystery research, where would I go? <laughs> ah, what about that one? Have you the means to fly? Is quite a distance. Not yet, all right? I'll unlock it soon enough. Hmm, inconvenient, but hardly an insurmountable problem. Huh, insert mountable problem. To me, Argos, the golden dog, seems fairly familiar. Is it her familiar? My friend, would you mind creating a double to carry Jake here over that island? Dot, dot, dot. Stubborn creature. There is no place on this great star we have not together traveled, yet still he remains obstinate in the presence of strangers. Argos has a rather exacting standards, I'm afraid. Oh, we're not up to his standards. We've met Argos before on the moon. What? You've ridden him before? Oh, uh, your before meaning my after. Not at all confusing, that. Interesting. It is certainly not unthinkable. 
But speaking of the here and now, a quick solution is for us to face off in a sparring match. Demonstrate to him that you are capable of holding your own against me in battle, and you should convince Argos that you are worthy of his back. And besides, I might even teach you a thing or two in the bargain. Uh, okay. I feel like you would wipe the floor with us. You seem doubtful, but useful lesson or not, it would certainly be a moment to remember. A memory of the distant past to cherish. What do you say, traveler out of time? Choose your battlefield. I do what I must. And if this memory turns out to be a bad one. <laughs> and so, uh, if this memory turns out to be a bad one. Choose your battlefield. Why not? Maybe we should fight the pupper instead. I admire your confidence. Clear your mind and prepare your weapons. I shall await you at the clearing over yonder. All right, if we got to prepare, we got to prepare all the way, which means all of this better gear, which is much better, we're equipping.